Greetings fellow history enthusiasts and welcome back to the Alternate History Channel. As we embark on another historical journey, we'll be delving into the pivotal events of ancient times that had the power to reshape empires and rewrite the very fabric of history. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button for more weekly explorations into the what-ifs of history. In today's episode, we'll navigate the turbulent waters of the Roman Civil Wars and set our sights on one of the most defining naval battles in ancient history, the Battle of Actium. But let's spin the wheel of fate and imagine a world where Mark Antony and Cleopatra emerged as the victors against Octavian. How would Rome, Egypt and the broader Mediterranean world have changed? Strap in as we voyage back to 31 BC and paint a picture of an alternate Roman Empire. The year is 31 BC and the Roman world, once a beacon of republican virtues and ideals, finds itself embroiled in a series of civil wars. The once unbreakable unity of Rome was now fractured by the ambitions of its leading men. The Roman Republic had been a victim of its own success, expanding rapidly bringing wealth, slaves, and diverse cultures under its domain. This expansion and the power struggles it ignited led to the rise of the Second Triumvirate, a political alliance comprising Mark Antony, Octavian later known as Augustus, and Lepidus. Mark Antony, a decorated general and one of Julius Caesar's closest confidants, had over time become deeply intertwined with the last pharaoh of Egypt, Cleopatra. Their relationship was more than just a passionate love affair. It was also a powerful political alliance that fused the grandeur of Rome with the ancient opulence of Egypt. From their base in Alexandria, they envisioned a world where the Mediterranean would dance to their combined symphonies. Opposing this eastern power was Octavian, the adopted heir of Julius Caesar. Young, politically astute and hungry for sole power, Octavian was alarmed by Antony's perceived neglect of Roman virtues viewing his romance and alliance with Cleopatra as a betrayal of Roman ideals. It was a clash of perceptions. Where Antony saw potential in uniting East and West, Octavian saw a threat to Roman dominance and traditions. As tensions grew, propaganda wars ensued. Octavian painted Antony as a traitor, ensnared by Cleopatra's charms and turning his back on Rome. The public sentiment in Rome began to turn against Antony. The conflict reached its climax at the Gulf of Ambracia, near Actium, a naval confrontation that promised to shape the course of Western civilization. Historically, Antony and Cleopatra's fleet was defeated by Octavian's more nimble and better strategized navy. But let us divert from the annals of history and pose a tantalizing question. What if Mark Antony and Cleopatra had triumphed at the Battle of Actium? How would a victorious Antony reshape the trajectory of Rome and the Mediterranean? The Battle of Actium, fought in 31 BC, was a clash not just of ships and soldiers, but of egos, ambitions, and the future direction of the known world. Antony's fleet, while initially positioned disadvantageously, displayed tactical genius. Cleopatra's personal squadron managed to create a diversion, drawing a segment of Octavian's forces away, allowing Antony's heavier quinqueremes to punch through the center of Octavian's fleet. With superior maneuverability and the surprise element of some innovative Egyptian naval tactics, Antony's forces managed to encircle and decimate a significant portion of Octavian's ships. By dusk, the sea was claimed by Antony and Cleopatra. This victory at Actium sends shockwaves through the Roman world. The great Octavian, seen by many as the rightful heir to Caesar and the embodiment of Roman resilience, finds himself defeated, his reputation tarnished. The immediate aftermath sees a shift in political alliances and loyalties. The power couple, riding high on their victory, quickly consolidates their influence. Alexandria, already a city of wonders, becomes the heart of their domain, rivaling Rome in splendor and influence. With Cleopatra's ambition and Antony's Roman sensibilities, a unique blend of Greco-Roman and Egyptian cultures starts to emerge. This hybrid culture influences architecture, art and governance, creating a rich tapestry that stretches from the Nile to the Tiber. Octavian, on the other hand, faces a challenging dilemma. His defeat diminishes his influence in Rome, and he's forced into a political exile. Some historians might speculate that he could have tried to regroup in the Roman West, or even find allies in the distant provinces. 
Yet, without the resources of the East and the backing of the Roman heartland, his ambitions of sole rule are significantly hindered. Back in Rome, the Senate and the Roman elites grapple with the reality of Antony's triumph. Antony, keen on maintaining a balance, divides his time between Rome and Alexandria. He ensures that Rome remains an essential centre of power, but also elevates Alexandria to a near-equal status. The Senate undergoes reforms, with both Roman and Eastern nobility sharing the chambers, leading to a more diverse but also more complex political landscape. The Roman legions, which had been the muscle behind the Republic's expansion, undergo significant changes too. Antony starts integrating Egyptian soldiers trained in Hellenistic warfare into the legions. This diversified army becomes a symbol of the new Rome, a fusion of East and West. However, this victory and the resulting power dynamics also come with challenges. There's unrest in parts of the Roman domain, especially in the Western provinces, where Octavian's defeat is mourned and the influence of the Eastern Queen Cleopatra is viewed with suspicion. Antony and Cleopatra find themselves navigating revolts, conspiracies and assassination attempts. The intertwining of Rome and Egypt also has repercussions on the broader Mediterranean. Client kingdoms and provinces see a shift in their loyalties. The Parthian Empire, Rome's eastern nemesis, views the new Greco-Egyptian Roman alliance with a wary eye. Diplomatic engagements intensify, leading to a blend of cooperation and conflict along the eastern frontier. By reshaping the power dynamics of the Mediterranean, Antony and Cleopatra's victory at Actium sets the stage for a world where East and West don't just coexist, but actively shape each other, creating a legacy that would influence millennia to come. The victory of Antony and Cleopatra at Actium had set forth a cascade of events that fundamentally shifted the trajectory of the ancient world. With Antony and Cleopatra reigning supreme, a united Greco-Egyptian and Roman Empire emerges. Instead of the Mediterranean being dominated by the strict Roman culture, it becomes a blend of the East and West. Egyptian granaries, combined with Roman architectural prowess, lead to a flourishing of both cultures. The prosperity extends beyond politics and warfare. Economically, the empire witnesses an upsurge. Alexandria, with its iconic lighthouse, transforms into a beacon of trade, perhaps even overshadowing Rome as the heart of the world. The once great city of the Ptolemies experiences a renaissance, becoming the crux of culture, commerce and learning. Octavian, the man who in our timeline became Augustus and heralded the age of Roman emperors, fades into relative obscurity, remembered as a worthy adversary, but ultimately a defeated one. Without the Julio-Claudian dynasty's onset, the Roman political landscape evolves differently, possibly retaining more of its republican character, but with a singular monarch's hint. In this landscape, the gods too find themselves blending. The Roman pantheon, with its strictly defined deities, finds company in Egyptian gods. Isis, revered in certain Roman circles, perhaps ascends to greater importance. This syncretic religious landscape might also cast its shadow on the burgeoning Christian faith, influencing its early trajectory. While the West flourishes, the East presents its challenges. Parthia, Rome's perennial adversary, finds itself dealing with a more united Western front. This might lead to different dynamics on the Eastern frontiers, with potential long-lasting peace or pivotal wars that reshape the Middle East. Cleopatra's reign also ensures that the Ptolemaic lineage, which could have ended with her, finds new vigor. Ptolemaic traditions and bloodlines could intertwine with Roman legacies, creating a fusion dynasty that stands the test of time. As time marches on, the empire witnesses its highs and lows, but the indelible mark left by the union of Antony and Cleopatra is undeniable. A world where the grandeur of Rome mingles with the mysteries of Egypt, where senators debate in the shadow of pyramids, and the Nile's waters touch Roman shores. Such pivotal moments, like the Battle of Actium, underscore history's fragility. A single day's events had the potential to redraw the map of the world, to create legacies and to bury others. As we delve into these alternate timelines, we're reminded of the myriad possibilities that lie in the annals of what might have been. As we conclude this journey through a world where Antony and Cleopatra stood triumphant at Actium, we're reminded of the fine threads that history often hangs upon. 
the world of Cleopatra's lasting dynasty and a Greco-Egyptian Roman fusion could have birthed wonders unknown to our timeline, a testament to the deep intertwining of fate and choice. Such alternate scenarios not only feed our imagination, but also make us reflect upon the immense complexity and interconnectedness of historical events. Thank you for joining the Alternate History Channel on this exploration. If you enjoyed this thought-provoking journey, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more dives into the boundless ocean of what-ifs. Engage with us in the comments below. How do you imagine a world under Antony and Cleopatra's extended rule? Until our next historical adventure, stay curious and keep questioning.